Welcome to Unit 4. For second grade, we have a Life in the Garden skit that starts with a book. And the book is called Cucumber Soup. Now, if you don't have this book or can't find access to it, there are several insect books and critter books that you can read that are a lot of fun. The way I like to teach cucumber soup is to tell the story using real props. I like to use coffee grounds to simulate an anthill because um, this is organic matter, so you can just mix it in and it'll be some good acidic matter for the plants. In this story, a cucumber falls on an anthill and covers its entrance. And then the ants come home. This is a teeny tiny ant that I made, and it's out of a raisin. But you can use anything you'd like to make um, your little critters. And it tried to push this cucumber off its anthill, but it couldn't do that. The rest of the story will tell you what happens next. Once you've prepared um, the kids to be insects and critters in the garden, and even plants in the garden, you'll be doing the garden play. In the garden play, you'll be making signs for everybody to participate because this is like a melodrama. So you'll make applause or yay signs for the good guys in the garden, the ones that are protecting the plants. So everybody, when the sign gets held up, they go yay or they applaud. You'll also be making boo signs or having them stomp their feet if it's a bad guy that's destroying the plants. You can make all sorts of props. You can make them out of paper, the kids can make them, whatever you want to do. So, be creative throughout this and when you're done, enjoy the kids and use this play to show other classrooms and in your salad party at the end of the year. Show those parents. So have a good time. I'm getting that bean leaf beetle for my frog. I got him! <laughs> Early one morning in a vegetable garden, ten little ants went out to look for food, and while they were gone, something terrible happened. And the hairy garden spiders said, We did it! Six fuzzy bumblebees said, We did it! Five purple butterflies said, We did it! One tiny flea said, We did it! And everyone in the garden clapped and cheered. So, I told you at the beginning that there was something in here that is not an insect. Who remembers from the story a critter that's not an insect? And why is a spider not an insect? Because in an eight-legged one is called an arachnid, right? And all of our insects have, have six. So in our story, we had some good guys, we had some bad guys. Now we're going to do a play. And all of you will be in my play. Some of you will be garden good guys. Some of you will be plants. I even have a gardener. And you will all be in our garden acting at the same time. Brady's garden is a beautiful, peaceful place where the flowers are swaying back and forth on their long, slender stems in the golden sunshine. The zinnias leaves occasionally flutter in the breeze. The plants enjoy every day out in the sun or gentle rain, and they smile. While Grady the gardener works in the garden, Grady stands up and admires his beautiful garden. Then Grady takes his tools and walks towards his house. Here comes a honeybee, buzzing and flying toward the flowers. The honeybee flaps her little wings, and you know what? I see a couple of butterflies flying in with her. The butterflies and the bumblebees fly to each flower, collecting or searching for nectar. And when they get the nectar, some pollen falls on their bodies. And as they go from flower to flower, the honeybee and butterflies are pollinating the flowers, so the flowers can produce seeds. The honeybees and the butterflies are heroes. Frutilda, our pumpkin, is starting to look sick because the squash bug is sucking the juice from her leaves. Out hops a frog, right next to the squash bug. The frog sticks out his tongue, grabs the squash bug, and eats it, and hops away. Frog is a hero for helping our pumpkin. Yay! During the dark and dreary night, our cutworm crawls on his belly to the top of the soil. And he takes his scissors over and gently snips two of our flowers off right at the bottom of their stem. And the flowers fall to the ground. Cutworm looks at the audience and shows us his evil face. So he is up. And then he goes off into the night looking for more things to snip off. 
just as the flowers and the pumpkin think they've got it made for the night, here come the bunnies out for their nighttime garden party, hopping around, wiggling their nose. Get ready with them. They may be cute. Raccoon and deer also come. They think gardens are like potluck picnics with an assortment of tasty foods. They're fun to watch, but they are villains in the garden. Boo! Just as you think they're going to eat everything off in the garden, Brady peeks out the window and sees him. He runs out with his trowel and chases them away. Run, bunnies, run. He's got a trowel. <laughs> so Brady, once again, is a hero for saving the garden. And then, Brady, one last thing. Would you pick up the two flowers that got cut off? and take them into the house and put them in a vase with water so they can enjoy yet another day. That was funny. The flowers and Grady are content, and the pumpkin, knowing that tomorrow will be another day of peace and harmony in the garden. Yay! All right, so today, for your snack, we wanted you to have healthy ingredients and put them together and make critters. And there were food and nutrition people that were having trouble figuring out good snacks for you guys. So I had the brilliant idea yesterday that I would just give you all the parts and see what kind of insects, or critters, or things you can put together. Miss Clean is giving everyone hand sanitizer. You have a plate of different snack ingredients in front of you. Um, to use for glue, we have given you three different things and we are very interested in knowing what your favorite um, things are, but for glue today, we have some cheese whiz, the yellow stuff, and you have some peanut butter, and you have some cream cheese. Can you point to it? What you made out of this? Is that ant yeah, um killing some some yep. food? Yeah. Wood. That's the okay. most common one. I have a bud head with some hair with a sombrero. What do you have? Austin? I have ants taking a tomato and a carrot. And I have ants under a tree. Very good. Look at that. I have a butterfly and I have little, I think these are people under an umbrella at the beach. I have a bug carrying off a piece of food from the garden and ants on the log. Um, this is a ladybug and this is a worm um, and a rod with ants on it. I made ants and beetles on a log and then I made a bee and here's the stinger. And then I made a color worm cutting down this little, um, I'll call it a tree. What we're going to do is look at the pictures. See the pumpkin, and I'm seeing that there's garden critters all around in the picture. So what we want to do is see if we can identify where they are at, and I will let people come up and point to them. But we need to figure out what matches up, and if they're a good insect or a bad insect. So we have a tomato hornworm, and they love, what plant do you suppose they love? Tomatoes. And they also have like little thorns. That's why they call them a tomato hornworm. So you're looking for a worm. And you know I figured out there's like three worms in this picture. So where is my tomato hornworm? Shane? T? He says G. I agree. So what a tomato hornworm does is it goes into our garden and they're big and they're striped and you know white striped with black. Gigantic and they eat tomatoes. And they eat the leaves. So are they good guys, bad guys? Some of them are so sad guys. So we're going to do a little activity called Garden Patrol. And we are going to have you in four teams. And Mrs. Meyer already told me how she was going to split it. Um, each team is going to become one garden pest. Oh, I can't show. I want to show the answers. Because each team, when you get your word, you don't want to reveal it. Because I'm going to have you be doing charades to show the class. And it's going to be a critter. So it will be an animal or an insect. And they are pests. That means they go into the garden and they do something. And when you get your um, name of your critter, we'll walk around and make sure you know what kind of damage your thing does. And what you're going to do is come up here and act out your animal or insect. See if the class can figure out what you are. And then okay. the whole class is going to pretend like your garden scene investigators. You're going to first figure out <coughs> what the critter is that's invaded your garden. And then we'll figure out what can you do to get rid of it 
because you don't want any of our you got all right. Right. Okay, so we are ready. All right. Investigators, what are you seeing going on in here? You guys freeze. Freeze the scene. Cut. What are we seeing going on, Connor? Uh, birds messing around, eating plant, the seeds of the plants. All right. Are they right? Okay, yeah. you're frozen. You're frozen. Okay, they are birds. He's right. In fact, they were different kinds of birds. Gross. Investigators, what are things that we could do to keep those birds out of our garden? Yes, Miss GSI. Um, put a windmill in your garden. It won't hurt the birds. It will just add a little more wind to it so they won't go near your garden because they think like there's something big and something that's going to attack them because they think it's breezy. Some people use those little pinwheels too. Ryan? Scarecrow. Oh, you could work here. Scarecrow. That would be fun to make too. So we're going to scare the birds away. Frogs are not a pest in our garden. Remember that. We're looking for, we're thinking about garden Bugs. pests. I mean, I mean, a garden pest. Please. Bunnies. Bunnies. What do you think, Riley? Bunnies. All right, freeze. GSI agents. What do we do to get rid of bunnies in our garden? What do we do? Um, you could kill them away. Sure. Just like Grady did, right? What else could we do? Um. We could put a trap in there and then maybe they won't go near since they don't want to get trapped. Mm -hmm. Or they get trapped and you remove them, right? What else could we do? You could just make like that, a very house when the bunnies can't hop over it. That's allowed to go in. Yep, because we can go over the fence and they can't go over the fence.